Okay, so we're going to start the nacelles, and you can see the side view here showing all those little bulkheads. And remember, this is all butt joined, just like the fuselage, which isn't my favorite, but I got an idea how it works. Now, when you look at these, those two formers, for instance, are the same. Those two formers are the same. And the top row is for one nacelle, and there's the bottom row right there. So as long as you say, I need four of those, right? Because there's two for that side and two for the right side and left side, four of that. So as long as you do that, you'll get all those formers and they'll be the same size if you cut them out at the same time. So what I did was I cut out my balsa and uh, the first thing I did was roughly cut out the uh, pattern for the former and then glued the former to one of the um, pieces of balsa just with a little glue stick. Anything will do. You don't have to use a glue stick. You can use Elmer's or you can use the, the tacky glue, whatever. Um, just so that you get it on that piece of wood and you have the pattern on that top piece. And that's what you're going to use as your um, guide. So I put some glue on the other one, put the other one on the other side. I may as well cut them all out at once because it's, it's uh, difficult here to do. So this is going to be the, the pattern for the... Um, the back part um, of the of the nacelles and again two on each side so that's why there's four but then what I do was I put a little bit not a huge amount but a little bit of that glue on the balsa and then I si proceeded to just stack them like a sandwich like a dagwood sandwich if you know what that is you're old if you do um, and um, you know, just making sure that you, when you stack them, I should have cut these all the right, same size so they would be much easier to put together because there's lots of overlap and overhang. But all you're doing is making this big sandwich of four pieces of balsa. Then you take it over to a scroll saw. At least that's what I did. And now you end up with these pieces that are all essentially identical. I cleaned them up a little bit, get rid of some of the razor marks from the little saw blade. Um, I have a little Dremel, um, a little Dremel scroll saw, and it works great for cutting very simple things like light balsa and things. It doesn't do anything for oak, but it does fine for this little stuff. So, then I took my knife and just sort of prized these apart. Just kind of put it in there and twist it back and forth, and just take your time, and uh, you can pull them apart. And you just keep doing that until you get all your pieces uh, separated. Uh, the only thing to warn people about is with, uh, alcohol will clean this up, but if you do this and use like a glue stick, your blade will get mushy and sticky and dull. So um, just be aware of that. And I don't know how long it takes. If, if it would be harder to pull this apart, you should let it dry a lot longer. But this whole process took, you know, in terms of putting the glue together and, 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 then, and then cutting them on the saw, probably took me 15 minutes and I was able to pull these all apart. So there they are all apart and then I do now is I just write on these um, what they are so I remember because they are different sizes though you know the, the, the four on the on the right side are different sizes than the other four on the left side and I'm just making sure keeping straight in my head which is which because I am I'm definitely dyslexic um, dyslexic and so it's hard to remember where things go so Put them all together, and it's ready to go. And again, this should help make our the butt joints easier. Then we start doing like we always do. Uh, there's a piece that's one of the pieces that's going to be part of the nacelle. And then there's this little tab that was on the edge. So I cut that out. Um, on this model, those are actually just integral to the uh, skin. And I don't know if they mean it to be that way. And then when you fold it over, you just have a lump there. Or if you're supposed to cut it, I cut it like this so there is no lump. I assume that this is what you're supposed to do because it looks like there's a little center line to add your other skin. Yeah, the more I think about it, that's got to be what it's for. It's just, it's just economy of, of printing, I think. Anyway, line one side up, make sure it's even, and uh, let it dry. Just make sure it's, the tab is on there nice so that when you start twisting it around like this, you will be able to uh, glue it and it will be nice and secure. Um, this is just like always. You can use a, an eraser. You can use your hand. You can use um, those uh, quilting squares that I use for, for, for 
for putting quilts out or for um, putting out um, um, knitted things. You put you they're wet. You 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 basically pin them out so that they dry. Um, but I usually end up just using my hands. That's that's the easiest way to do it. Your hand tends to be big enough to do most of these pieces. Um, and then when you're ready, I got my little tweezers ready in case I have to put them put some uh, some nice uh, pressure on there. Put a little glue on the tab. Again, making don't do it immediately. Make sure it dries. Uh, make sure the tab dries on the other piece. Don't put too much glue on because it'll just smush around and it will be it will uh, be hard to align. And then you just slide them together and squeeze them until they are in the correct um, center line. And uh, so far on this model, everything's been pretty good. There's one part later in the nacelle I had to modify, and I'll show you what I had to do, but it wasn't a big deal at all. So there are those two pieces. That's the, that's the start. So there'll be a piece behind those and a piece in front of them. So now the next step, of course, is to um, add formers to these. And I just check my directions to make sure which 71B, 72A, 73A, 732B. <coughs> make sure that using the directions you know which is which. So now I move on to other parts. Um, and here I've just got everything cut out. You can see I got the formers laying up the way they're supposed to go. And the next thing to do is to add these together. Now I know which ones they are. I've drawn a center line down them. And you just make sure you line up the center line with the little tick that's on the um, skin. And then you just test fit it a bunch of times and make sure it's going to fit. This one fit actually really well. Um, if you need to, of course, you can always do a little bit of, of sanding, but you don't want to change the shape because you've already gone to all that trouble to make sure that the shapes are all identical or as close as you can get it. So if you sand the contour of this one, then it won't mate up to the second to the one it's supposed to go to. So I do everything I can to leave them just as is. Um, if they're a little type, I will bevel them a little bit, but I try to keep them as is. So here I'm testing the other side, making sure it's going to fit. And uh, in reality, if you put these with their skins, and you just very carefully make sure the skins are tight against the former, they tend to fit pretty well. In this case, that one for sure is a little tight. Um, it's going to be hard to get in there. Um, but what you do is, like I've done before, you pop the former in, turn the skin over so that it's vertical on the bench, and then you push through with a, a pencil or a knife or something. And that makes the former be flush with the skin. Once that happens, in this case, uh, you don't have to do this, but I find it's easier than just to go from the back and give a little shot of super glue rather than putting glue on the skin or on the former and then sliding it in. Um, I've had them get stuck before and all kinds of nonsense happen. So that's what I do with some of these. But here I'm just making sure I know where the center is and lining up this former, taking care that it's going to fit. In this case, this one, I cannot get it in. It's just a little big. And again, right there, all up to, I can't quite do it. But now instead of, again, um, sanding the whole thing, oh, here I panicked just to make sure this was dry. I didn't want to start playing with this until it was really dry in there. So I threw a little zip kicker in just to make sure it dried instantaneously. And now I play with this piece. I know that it's, it's uh, pretty solid. It isn't going anywhere. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> this piece needs to be modified slightly. Um, what I'm going to do first, before I try to put it in, is cut a little piece, a little square, out of this former so that I can insert my pencil in there and do this, be able to do the same thing with the other side, i.e. put the former in and then press against it so that it will uh, be flush up against the skin. So I can stick my pencil in there and that'll work great. So now I try to stick this on, lining up the bottom piece with that vertical line, which is the center of the um, former. And I'm trying to put it in. I'm thinking this one I have a little difficulty. 
I think this one is again I'm testing it and I'm hoping that it works but if you have to push too hard and you're going to bend the paper it's it's not a good idea so what I decided to do was sand but not sand the contour sand um, an angle a bevel into it so see I'm sanding it at an angle all the way around on that part and all that's going to do is give me a little wiggle room to be able to slide the form around so I'm not changing the contour the contour is the same <clears throat> but with the bevel I might be able to slide it into the paper, under the paper, and wedge it in there, and it might be um, just perfect. So here I'm test fitting it again with the little contour cut out of it, lined up on the bottom, and uh, sure enough, I'm able to get it in there. Um, there it goes. It slides right in, and it's in enough so that it's actually you know parallel with the paper or whatever. It's, it's going to be in there. And then what parts I can't very carefully push it in make sure it's good but see now it's nice and flush works great and then I can to make sure tap it down and lightly push down on the skin on the outside and now I've got a nice flush former the vertical line matches up with the nix on the uh, skins on the top and bottom <clears throat> and there you go I also use that hole to drop my glue in so I kind of hold the piece so that I know where you know where vertical is where the glue was going to drop vertically based on gravity on earth and then you just try to kind of get close if you don't get it perfect I just end up sticking a, um, a bamboo skewer or an old brush or whatever and then like that and wind wind it around and get the glue up against the former and the skin where it's supposed to be and then it's nice and solid and formed so another one, there's a skin or the, the skin with that piece uh, already put on, the little, the little uh, tab already glued on. And same old thing, just keep winding it until you can put them together without difficulty. And um, this one I'm using this brush that has a slight taper on it because the actual piece is a taper. It's going to be round at the front. This is the part that the, it's going to back up against the spinner. It's round at the front and it gets fatter at the other side, so that's why I'm not using just a dowel. It slides in there like so. Same old, same old. Grab some nice fresh pile of glue. And uh, oh, that's a love note I wrote to my wife, by the way, um, up on up the left when I left for work. Um, so make a little uh, bit of glue on there and. Do the same thing. I mean, it's it's repetitive, but it's not bad to see it be done a few times because it's something that you just got to practice. Because you will, when you squeeze it, you'll squeeze too hard, and things will slide. Or you put it together, and it really isn't aligned. All kinds of stuff happens. In this case, it was good. Now, I'm transferring this nick line on the outside into the inside because that way I can put my former in when I'm going to position it. So there's a nick line up on the top. Put that in there. So now I know that's center take my former and make sure it's oriented the right way and start test fitting again this is I mean the reason I had this video is this is it seems like I said repetitive but this is exactly what you have to do and it's actually really satisfying especially when these things fit remember you're cutting these things out based on you know the the, the, the line that's in the plans and lo and behold um, you know you can actually it's amazing to me that you can make it fit so here I am again, noticing I'm a little bit wide. So again, beveling the side that's going to be put up in underneath the skin, not changing the contour. Um, worst comes to worst, yeah, you can change the contour a little bit, but I don't want to because, again, I, I worked hard to make sure that the form that butts up against this one is the same size. Um, and so you just try to be as gentle as you possibly can. And uh, this is just... Uh, um, a little bit of finesse, but it goes a long way. Slide it in, pull the pieces up around, and then lo and behold, it starts to fit. And uh, and then once you get it in there, and it's nice and tight, then you just go about gluing it in. And the idea, again, is for making things flush. So there it is. Look at that. Do the same thing. Kind of bear. I'm pushing down on the skins. And when I look at this, I'm looking to see that I do I or do I not have um, former sticking out and in this case I just do a little bit of adjustment and I go ahead and add my thick super glue to the inside and that thing's on there it's not going not going anywhere so 
that's kind of that's the kind of the series of steps at least that I use to put these together. Now the fun part is trying to put these together so they look good. And you can see the balsa showing through a little bit. That's okay. It's all going to be painted anyway. What I will point out is most of the markings and the drawings from the plan, they line up really well. So there are some things you can't see, some panel lines that are inked in on the sides where the, where the exhausts are going to go. Those things seem to line up spot on. Um, so that's, that's wonderful. Um, so I do the same thing, cut out a little hole in the former so that I can have access to the back side um, of the front part of the nacelle, which is going to, again, require to put in, in this case, a circular piece. And this is the piece that I end up having a little bit of issue with um, uh, because it turns out, and I don't know if it's something I did or not, uh, but this little circle is just way too small. Um, you put it in and it just falls right in place like that. And then when I turn this over and then try to use my little technique of pushing down to force the former in, it's just there's so much room it falls right out. So I doggedly try it a few times, but it's not going to work. And if you try to pull the skins down and glue them in place, you're just going to get puckers and wrinkles that look terrible. But again, I don't want to change the skin in this case. And I decided, OK, what I'm going to do is change the former. So how do you do that? What I did was to cut a little strip of just regular old typing paper. And I'm just going to glue it around the circumference of that former. And it dries very fast. And all it does is I mean, a couple of turns is all you need. Remember, you're, you're, you're adding this little tiny thickness. But it's amazing how little you need just to make it snug. Because as you go around, you're going to end up adding um, more thickness. And that's going to give you um, a real nice tight fit. And you can, it's neat because you can basically place it any way you want. You, know, you, can, you, know, you, can, you can really make it a custom fit. I don't know if other people do this. I suspect they're good enough that everything fits perfectly. But this is what mortals do to make sure that it fits. Um, it's easier than cutting a whole new former out, too, you know, throwing this against the wall and being upset. Just roll this thing around with extra paper. And typing paper is nice because it's so thin, and it adheres really well, and it's easy to put around shapes. So uh, in this case, I just keep putting this on all the way, and then I test it. And if it's not right, you can pull some off. It's not hard. And that's what's nice about these things. You're never in a point where you're completely painted into a corner and you can't fix it. So now, I stick this little guy in there, and I test it, and <clears throat> I do my little trick where I push through, and lo and behold, there it is, fitting like a glove. And so that's going to be perfect. In this case, um, I just decided to try to put white glue on the edge, on the inside of the skin at the front end. Um, didn't have to, but <coughs> I thought, why not? I'll try it and see what, if it works well, which it turns out, it worked fine. Pop this down, and you touch in the glue. In fact, the glue glues to the table slightly, as I recall. Yep, there's some glue on the table. There you go. Or not table, but my wife would kill me. Um, but there it is. And I'm just making sure, I'm looking at it, trying to make sure that it's completely at the edge. Um, because again, this is going to be where the back plate of the spinner um, is going to mate to. So you want to make sure it's going to be. Um, the right, right up against the skin. That's sort of the name of the game, especially with all these butt joint things. If you have tabs and things like the Holinsky kits, um, you know those you need to um, make sure those the, the skins are together really before you put the formers in. This you don't you don't do that. You're actually making each section and then gluing them, um, butt jointing them all the way along, which I guess is maybe the older way to do it. And here I am checking. So I'm checking, I'm looking for as little gap as I can get, making sure it's straight and true, making sure most of the panel lines seem to line up, even though I'm going to paint this. It's, it's good practice. And I notice there's a little bit of issue here. So I take a flat sanding block, and I swirl around one direction, and then I swirl around the other. So I try to make sure I do it counterclockwise and clockwise. And I tend to switch, turn the piece around as well, because you want to make it as even as possible. I just keep doing this. Sand each side. Sometimes you don't need to sand them at all. 
I find a little sanding on each side brings them up together, mates them pretty nice and, and tight. I've done it before where I haven't done that and the parts don't fit well and then I run into other issues. So I always do a little bit of sanding because you're never perfect. Uh, at least I'm never perfect when I put my formers in. But it's really getting there. Not bad. So they're ready to go. Stick them together. I guess I'm kind of pleased with that uh, look there. Doesn't look too bad. I sand them a few times. They try to make sure again everything's within within the realm of possibility. I mean, they should be absolutely perfect and line up everything. But in my case, they're close. But I wouldn't say that they're perfect. Um, but as long as they they look like nacelles when I'm done, I don't care. So I used in this case the super glue. And I put a fair amount on so that it wouldn't dry immediately and I could slide the pieces a little bit. But you do have to practice. If you're worried about doing this, don't use super glue. Use your tacky glue for sure. Um, I like the super glue because as long as I've tested it and I know I got my point parts even and look good, at least I'm satisfied with them, then um, I know I don't give a little pressure they're pushing down. I should have had a hole in the back there because then I could have pushed with my with my pen to make sure it's together. Um, but uh, any little like there, a little slight misalignment, but I'm not going to panic about it. Those lines do not match, and they are supposed to. Um, and that just means that you know the forms aren't exactly going to be concentric, and so <clears throat> definitely not a Polish job. But it'll work for me. Now the rear part is a little more complicated. Um, and you can see it's got that funny bird beak thing. That's the part that's the back of the nacelle that's going to be on the top of the wing. And you can see it's got a cut in it. And that's because it has to curve two ways. It has to curve around like this to be concave so that it makes a hump. It also has to curve, though, the lengthwise um, towards the little tips of those bills there. And so I'm working on first just getting these parts to twist and turn and fold into the right area. And then um, I take my dabbing tool here or anything round and I start trying to form these so that they will actually bend um, down. So they're, they're, they're bending in two different ways. They're, they're, again, convex or concave and they're bending um, down. And I just kind of practice, and they actually fit together pretty nicely. You can see a little white in there. If I was going to not paint these, I would, of course, edge glue the edge, edge paint these. And when you put them together, they look pretty good. But what I um, uh, decided to do was instead of butt joining these, I decided I was going to take a little piece of paper and glue in there so that I'd have something to kind of stick to. You could just butt join these, um, but again, I decided. I built another model recently, and they used this technique, and I liked it um, for a piece like this. That's sort of a double, a double whammy, double curve. So I cut up my little piece of typing paper. Essentially, it's the thin part um, on that model. It's not the thick paper. <coughs> and um, add a little glue to one side of my of my uh, slice there, of my cut, and then I kind of smeared it around so that it's um, more even than not. I didn't put any glue on the other side, just on the one side. And then I just position that strip so that it basically straddles that opening and make sure it glues to the one side for sure. So I'm squishing it down so it's going to glue um, and be nice and nice and uh, um, solid there. And now again, this does this provides me a, a better joint than a butt joint, um, at least in my estimation. So take a little glue and I start putting it on the side, other side of the tab, or you can put it on the, 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 the piece of paper, on the skin, on the inside of the skin, however you want to do it, so that you have a place to glue this, so that you can pull this thing together and it will look well, look nice. And see, there it is. It goes right together. And then you do a little squeezing and a little pushing and prodding, and you can make that white almost disappear. And again, if you probably cut more carefully, you'd make it disappear 100%. But even if we were going to use this color, as I said, and we just edge glued, edge, sorry, edge painted those, that would be almost invisible. It would look very, very, it would, it would look just fine. So now I cut off a little extra of the tab that's on there, make sure that looks good. 
and uh, and now it's going to be time to roll that other piece together. So I'm just making sure it's good, solid, and uh, um, is going to look okay when I'm all done. And that's going to be fine, um, just fine. Now there's a couple tiny little, see those marks? Those little marks are going to make it easier to add the nacelle to the wing. So those just get cut, just snipped. And they're just tiny, but they're enough to relieve some stress. So now, tab is already glued in. Same thing. It's just a weird, you know, it's a, it's a weird geometry, but same thing. You glue the tab, put glue on it, and roll your skin over, attach to the tab, and squeeze it till it dries. Um, very simple. Um, um, and I find that when the pieces are this small, you can just use your fingers, like your thumb and your forefinger, to squeeze things, maybe rather than the tweezers. Sometimes when I use the tweezers, I end up, things slide, and I end up not liking my joint. Uh, other times, the tweezers are amazing and really, really help. It kind of depends. Like you can't reach something. You get long tweezers. It's great. Now, because that's going to be a very kind of important joint, I go ahead and add a little extra super glue to make it a little bit tougher. And there I am transferring the vertical top and bottom to the inside of the skin. So again, I can um, get my um, former in there. So this former, I test it and set it in there and uh, works fine. That one I cut the hole out. I don't think I need to cut the hole out on this one. So one I should have and this one I didn't really need to, but whatever. As long as you don't destroy the integrity. This one fit really well. You can see it kind of goes in and it's not too tight. It's not too loose. Um, so uh, I got that one glued in off camera, but it worked really great using the very same techniques. And now I put glue on this half former and that goes right back there. And what I decided to do was I know where center is uh, and I decided to basically glue it. It's a little awkward to get in there. That's why I'm using those angled tweezers. But you glue it in successfully instead of unsuccessfully. Glue that in, line up your little tick mark and you just get it started. And once one part gets started, then you can work up on either side. So don't try to glue it all in at once. That was my mistake one time on, on the other nacelle. So you just glue a little bit in, and once it's dry, and it dries fast, then you shoot for um, getting the edges all cleaned up, rolling around that former. So you can see that's, I just have to now glue those tiny tips there. So just a little glue along those. You could use super glue. In fact, at one point, I think I did use super glue because one of them came off. Um, but this is the part that's going to attach to the lower wing, so it has to be a pretty strong, nice part. And as long as everything is, um, what you call it, flush, then you're going to be fine. So I let that dry and let that glue, and uh, life's great. Looks good. Looks really good, actually. So, last two pieces of the nacelle to bind together. Do what we've always done, which is do some counterclockwise and clockwise sanding to flatten things and to make them even. Did the same thing with this. Um, I found out that I tried to do it like this, which was a stupid, stupid idea. Because the very moment I did that, that's when I pulled some of the skin off. So I realized, no, that's not going to work. So I'm fixing that skin with super glue putting it back in place, so that was a that was a mistake. Um, but to sand it that way, you got to sand it, but don't be a doorknob like me and sand it. Do it like this, so you can cradle the whole piece, and then you can sand, and just make sure you're perpendicular or flat against the former, um, and you should be okay. Just a little bit of care. And notice it's not much sanding. It's very little sanding, in fact. And you keep test fitting these, and you'll notice that they get better and better. Uh, and you can even take a Sharpie or something and color around the edge, and it makes it kind of disappear, if you were so inclined. Again, mine are going to be you know, hit with some putty and sanded and all kinds of nonsense before we're done. So I've got lots of time to make more mistakes. This one, um, same thing. need to do a little bit more sanding just to make sure that I had a nice joint. Um, and I used to hate these, but now... You know, now I butt joints aren't so bad. I guess it just it's just a lot of 
you know, you do get better at it, I guess. So, again, I add my thick super glue, a considerable amount. Uh, probably way too much, but again, it allows me to sort of slide things before it really grips. Um, which is kind of, in this case, it's helpful. And again, I reiterate, I've test fit this a million times in practice, so I know that when I try to match these things up, I'm going to be really close. And if I'm off by a little bit, it's not going to be enough to make it look like it's completely out of kilter. Um, so I get this together, make sure it's good. And here, um, I stick my, my pencil through the back here and push. So I'm pushing against that former so that I'm, the glue is contacting the glue and it's contacting the former in front of it. Just making dang sure. And here I take this and go around the edges just to make sure that I'm getting a nice adhesion to those formers because if they don't dry if, and if they're, they dry like the middle part dries the outsides don't get it you're gonna have a mess so you gotta make sure it's all flush but if you've done all your sanding and practiced it should be absolutely well within your limits so there's the nacelle and it's basically done so now the fun part comes you mate this right up to the fuselage over that white part and look at the fit I mean that's better than any plastic model I've ever built I think you can't see it, but at the root, it just comes together beautifully. Um, there's even a spot here that's cut out. It lines up, and that's even the wing that I have printed myself. It's unbelievable. The bottom looks very good. There's those lines are showing where another former is going to be. So we got to finish those parts later. But uh, dang, if it doesn't come together straight and true, um, I did not expect that at all. So I added some glue to that top of that former, and then I add glue all the way to the outside edge of these parts of the, the skin on the nacelle. And then I added, I put some glue down here, grab my uh, uh, stick, and put glue all around where I think it's going to attach or where it's going to touch the wing. So in those areas around the root or the, or the uh, leading edge and around that bottom part. Any place you think it's going to actually come in contact, or you know it's going to come in contact and need some glue. Um, and uh, it's very satisfying to then take this thing, slide it in slowly, and just kind of push it in place until you don't see any white. And I'll be a monkey's uncle. It fits. Um, the other nacelle was the same way. It just blew me away. So here I'm just kind of checking it, making sure it's straight. You don't want to have it kitty wampus on there um, just making sure it's all right and here she is with her nacelles on dang it's a sexy machine it's gonna look really good I love putting the nacelles on because the wings are so skinny they look kind of funny now with the nacelles it looks like an ME410 so uh, wow I'm just humbled by again the designer um, I'm really hoping it still was pay, uh, hand drawn it make me feel better but Boy, if it was hand-drawn, they did a heck of a job. Um, so everything's fitting. Now there's more nacelle to fix and more little um, scoops and things, an oil cooler and all kinds of things you got to put on them. So I'll do that next, and then the nacelles will basically be done. And we're that much closer to the point where we're going to start sanding and filling and painting.